Great. So, hi. Uh, let me get this. So, um, both Yanis, uh, who's sitting over here, and myself uh, are members of PERA. Uh, PERA is uh, a non-profit organization based in Greece. And uh, we are here to discuss today the Neighborhood Room, uh, a project very close to what has been discussed here today. Uh, neighborhood Rooms is essentially a municipality project with the city of Thessaloniki. Uh, we are the ones that made the proposal and designed the, the whole project. Uh, and it's essentially a community project uh, for spaces for creativity, uh, a place where people collaborate, make things, uh, which is very important. So we're more uh, into uh, making things with our hands uh, or with basic tools, uh, participate in their neighborhood, uh, share and meet. The focus, so you can see here some, uh, some pictures of the space. I'm going to get back to that la later on. So it is a project that is really based on collaboration in the way that it was structured in the first place. So the way we work uh, is uh, the city of Thessaloniki with PERA uh, do design the project. Uh, and then we consult with external collaborators, so people from academia, uh, private sectors, public sector, and a series of programs and initiatives that are much more informal because this has to do a lot with informal education, not formal education. Uh, we work a lot with volunteers and citizen groups uh, that we consult during all the procedure, and I'm going to get back to that later on. And uh, of course, the epicenter of that is the neighborhood itself. So um, here you can see the, the people that uh, were basically the foundations that were uh, part of this. So this is not uh, a publicly funded project. This is a project funded by Stavros Niaros Foundation. Some of you may know it from the National Library of Greece that has received a lot of attention during the last couple of years. Uh, a very good uh, uh, example that we're going to discuss. So let, let me get to the neighborhood rooms. The whole idea here uh, was to create a network of spaces so not one single space itself. Uh, the reason for that was not to put all the money and all the effort into one space that may succeed or fail. And also create spaces that uh, evolve differently and collaborate with each other uh, in ways that uh, we didn't know in the beginning. And uh, the point was uh, to, oh, thank you very much. Uh, so basically uh, we want and we expect uh, each of the spaces, so currently it's three, uh, to develop in their own ways because each of the areas is very, very different. And hopefully, though some of it will succeed and some of it will fail, hopefully uh, this network will evolve. So basically, uh, we're talking about community spaces uh, where people get to meet, participate, or just hang out. We're gonna... So, uh, when we, oh. sorry, this has, I'm afraid, ah, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, so, uh, what's the reason for this project and why are we discussing collaboration in the first place? So, uh, why do we do what we do? Uh, I, will, I will talk uh, at first about, sorry for that, it seems we have, ah, okay. I will talk at first uh, about uh, the country we come from and the city where we come from because we're trying to solve real life problems. So um, according to all the analysis and the data, and we work a lot with data on, uh, on what people want and how people feel, uh, as you may have seen in the news the last uh, <laughs> few years, unfortunately, Greece has gone through an incredible financial crisis. Uh, and one in two people and one in two residents of Thessaloniki uh, do believe that the financial crisis is the city's biggest threat. Uh, and it is indeed. Some of you spoke before about loneliness in, uh, in cities, which is a huge <laughs> problem. Uh, and we were trying to deal with this, uh, with this project uh, towards that. Uh, and if on top of that, the way we build cities creates loneliness anyway. Uh, and if on top of that you put financial crisis to it, then it becomes a disaster. Uh, so the reason why... Uh, we, we made this project, is probably to deal with this, uh, with this issue. So 
some people do see the opportunity in that. So three out of four residents think uh, Thessaloniki does have talented capital. They just don't know how to express uh, this talent. And at the same time, sorry for that doesn't work, so I'll just go here. And at the same time, and this is very important for the public buildings that we have, one out of three residents think the public space is not in their neighborhood or is not close to them. So though we have a lot of spaces and libraries uh, are a big part of that, so there is also in Greece uh, a library per neighborhood, people do not, uh, do not either know it or use it. So, it, so in their feeling, uh, it's, uh, it's as if something is far, whereas they could uh, very easily participate in that. So getting back to uh, what we wanted to do in, uh, in terms of uh, sustainability, we wanted to create a project uh, with very, very low resources. We had low resources anyway, but we want to create it like that as well. Uh, so what we do is basically leverage existing municipal assets. So uh, by acknowledging the fact that uh, there was, uh, in the, over the past decade, an increase uh, of the makerspaces uh, movement. I'm sure many of you have heard. Uh, so uh, a trend basically for making things. Uh, we wanted to capitalize on that and bring together the residents, so the neighborhoods, their ideas, tools, uh, and existing assets. So uh, I want to discuss about uh, some, some things we faced during that. Initially, uh, we, made, uh, we made some researches uh, regarding makerspaces and how, what, how libraries thought about it. Uh, and it seems that though they were very, very interested, at the same time, they didn't want to commit into uh, having this inside. That's uh, Matt uh, talked earlier about uh, abandoning uh, <laughs> certain, certain things. Uh, in order to move on, and that's very, very important, but it's very hard to make people that actually work in the centers to change their routines. We're going to get back to that later. So what we ended up doing was basically using this infrastructure uh, that we're going to see. We broke down the areas of the spaces that uh, we needed per space, so uh, that, that they have workshops, assembly areas, storage spaces, media labs, uh, meeting spaces, etc. And we also uh, discussed with the municipality what assets they already possess. So we broke down like a series of parameters in terms of size, so going back to the architecture of the spaces, uh, that are important uh, to make people meet. Now, architecture is very, very important. I'm an architect as well, so I think so. Uh, it's very easy to think like that. But uh, I always remember uh, one of my favorite professors once told me she was, uh, she was saying that I was making people to, to meet, like I wanted to make people meet. And she said, listen, design cannot make people meet, but it can remove the barriers to meeting. And I see what we in general do you can never make people meet, but what you can do is facilitate, so try to accommodate all the parameters to, to allow that to happen. So going back to, to the space, uh, we broke down like a series of, of things that we wanted to do in, in the spaces. Uh, and uh, so the different, uh, the different needs and tried to have very, very simple elements in, in the space. So we tried to stay away from design, and that's very important. Life itself should be in the epicenter of things. So the activities uh, should be in almost like a blank space, uh, in our case at least. So the focus is different. And the process of design is to first understand the city and the, and the neighborhood. So first understand who you're doing this for. And for that it's important to know that there is no such thing as public. So it's publics. It's individuals that have personal stories and you need to understand each one of them in order to be able to design things uh, for them. 
So we then assessed the existing uh, program, so what were the resources that we had, uh, and the assets in the community. We, of course, considered the, the, the global terms, but at the same time, we knew that it has to be localized. So you do consider uh, the global, but then you need to go back to the one and understand the city neighborhoods. And then we developed our spaces and activities, as well as the equipment and materials, of course. Now, this is, not a, this is a circular procedure, so you need to go back. So every time, you need to go back, understand again, uh, and go through the same circle again and again. This is also happening almost uh, uh, in the way that we work in a weekly basis. So we get the feedback from, uh, from, the, from the neighborhoods and then we go back and redesign. Uh, we throw a lot of participatory workshops uh, that define the space program and equipment. And uh, we meet a lot of uh, community leaders uh, and look back uh, at several spaces we end up ah, here at three, the three spaces that we're working with. It's three very different uh, neighborhoods. Uh, all of the spaces were abandoned uh, when we uh, went there to, to work with them. So the second borough, so the one on my left, is at a very troubled area, I may say. Uh, it has a lot of problems with, uh, with drugs. It has a lot of problems uh, very, very low financially. Uh, the second one, so the third borough, uh, is actually like a, if there is such thing as a normal neighborhood, it's a normal neighborhood. Uh, it's uh, the center of uh, the old city. And uh, the fourth borough uh, is, uh, is an average, uh, let's say, uh, area with lots of people, uh, probably the biggest borough in Thessaloniki. So when we started, we basically had this. and a very low budget to put it together. So we decided with the minimum resources uh, to create spaces like that, you will see it afterwards, that's what we, this is reality, <laughs> after some months of, uh, of working on that. Um, and uh, as you can see, the, the, the role of architecture and design here is to be the absolute minimum. So leave space, uh, as clear as possible for life to come in and enter. Uh, here we have uh, one of the three spaces has, uh, has a backyard, so we're doing urban farming there. You'll see some pictures afterwards. So uh, this is, a, and uh, I will pause here, this is a two-year project. Uh, we have started a few months ago uh, and we are developing uh, the, the activities that I will show you before, uh, early, later. So the, the important thing, and someone from the audience spoke earlier regarding marketing. Uh, marketing is a very interesting thing that uh, it has to work. Otherwise, people like uh, have uh, the tendency not to, not to listen. So we went to uh, one of the most uh, important offices in Greece, like graphic design offices, and Thessaloniki has a lot of them, uh, to build this brand identity. They came up with a very interesting work that you may see here. Uh, a, lot, uh, a lot of colorful stuff, uh, a very nice typo. And uh, we developed like a, a series of graphics together with them for the different activities, uh, so that it is both uh, something informal and something playful. So it's important for people to have fun in these spaces. Uh, otherwise, people will just not get back. So you can see some of that here. So the important also thing here is to discuss the, the fact that these activities, uh, we are not attached to them meaning we are ready to start and stop any activity at any time. So uh, what we do is basically uh, we throw ideas, uh, discuss the budget and discuss the, the outcomes. Uh, we test ideas first as a team. That's, ve that's a very important also uh, step. Uh, we collect data from the people that uh, are part of these activities. Uh, so we have uh, activity enrollment forms, activity questionnaires, etc. 
And we basically ask with the neighborhood to ask what they want. This is the most important fact. So uh, during weekly meetings with the people from the areas, uh, we discuss what they want from the future. So what is important to them, what would make their lives uh, better, uh, and how they can, uh, they can love, basically, they can come together with the neighbors. So you can see some of that here. So as I said before, organic growth is to us uh, the most important probably characteristic of this, uh, of this project. So we continue to develop new activities <laughs> and we abandon or kill <laughs> uh, the activities that, that don't work or that fail to attract people. Uh, you can see some of that here. We started low tech, uh, which uh, I think is very, you know, people get intimidated uh, by high tech in the beginning. So uh, starting low tech is easier to bring like a wider audience. So here we focus a lot on, on upcycling. There is a lot of knitting, which is one of our trendiest activities. Uh, and uh, of course, all of these are just alibis to bring people to the spaces. So uh, activities uh, like space need to be cheap because uh, so that is easy to, to change the direction. And um, I think that collaboration is exactly to understand through that uh, that one person or one foundation or one organization cannot do it all. So through collaboration we just and through empathy, like mentioned before, you basically understand you cannot do it alone. Uh, so uh, it's easy to understand like what to abandon and what to get back to. So, I guess this is not working any longer. So, thank you very much. Thank you.